States is seeking to make space a new arena of war. U.S. military documents speak of having the U.S. control space and from space dominate the Earth below. The U.S. military wants to base weapons in space. And now with George W. Bush and Richard Cheney in power, the country has an administration intimately linked to the corporate and arch-conservative interests which, with the U.S. military, have been seeking to turn space into a war zone. Star Wars is back. And there's only a narrow window to stop the U.S. plans from going forward and preventing what inevitably would follow. Other nations meeting the U.S. in kind and an arms race and ultimately war in space. And there's only a narrow window to strengthen the Outer Space Treaty, the landmark 1967 international treaty that seeks to keep war out of space, that sets aside space for peaceful purposes. The U.S. space warfare plans are explicitly laid out in documents, including the Vision for 2020 report of the U.S. Space Command, which was set up to coordinate U.S. space warfare activities. Here's the report, which features a laser weapon firing a beam down from space, zapping a target on Earth. Vision for 2020 starts out, U.S. Space Command dominating the space dimension of military operations to protect U.S. interest and investment, integrating space forces into warfighting capabilities across the full spectrum of conflict. The model? The U.S. Space Command compares the U.S. effort to control space and the Earth below to how centuries ago nations built navies to protect and enhance their commercial interests, how the great empires of Europe ruled the waves and thus the world. U.S. policy at every front, certainly the congressional front and more importantly the executive front, say quite explicitly that it is our moral right and our duty to use unilateral control as often as possible. And to that extent, I think one has to say that you can't blame the Space Command or the directors of the intelligence agencies because they are merely doing what our civilian leadership wants them to do in a very expressed nature. Now, the civilian leadership on their front can say, really, our entire culture expects a winner-take-all attitude toward space domination and planetary domination. The blueprint for the space military program of the Bush-Cheney administration is this document, issued in early 2001, the report of the Space Commission chaired by the new Defense Secretary, Donald Rumsfeld. In the coming period, states the report, the U.S. will conduct operations to, from, in, and through space in support of its national interests, both on the Earth and in space. The report urges the U.S. president have the option to deploy weapons in space. It stresses the projection of power through and from space in response to events anywhere in the world. The Rumsfeld Space Commission recommends a transition of the U.S. Space Command to a Space Corps, a quasi-independent military arm like the Marine Corps. The Rumsfeld Space Commission was set up by legislation authored by Senator Bob Smith of New Hampshire. Smith says of U.S. control of space. It is our manifest destiny. You know, we went from the East Coast to the West Coast of the United States of America, settling a continent, uh, and they call that manifest destiny. Well, now the next continent, if you will, the next frontier uh, is space, and it goes on forever. Uh, the, the assets are unlimited. Everyone in the civilian community, as well as the intelligence agency and Space Command leadership, honestly believe that the United States deserved the fruits, so to speak, of winning the Cold War, and that we are in a position now where the United States is the only one in their eyes that has the right to claim sole ownership of space and are not about to let others impinge upon space in a way that would threaten U.S. national security interests. The problem is that these leaders in the United States government believe they are the only ones who have the right to say what use of space is right and wrong. Vision for 2020 stresses the global economy of which the U.S. is the engine. 
says the U.S. Space Command. The globalization of the world economy will also continue with a widening between haves and have-nots. The view is that by controlling space and the Earth below, the U.S. will be able to keep those have-nots in line. The U.S. military not only acknowledges, it proudly points to U.S. corporations being involved in helping set U.S. space military doctrine. The documents that have come out of the Space Command over the last few years have talked about a, a, a power reach far beyond the borders, the physical borders of the United States. And in their own um, rationale for their extension of power, they talk about the need to uh, protect United States interests and investments worldwide. They're not talking about defending our own towns and villages from an invader. They're talking about protecting this huge globalization dynamic that is more or less a new form of colonization for the rest of the world. It's a little bit like uh, the cavalry following the original settlers. That finally, if you are taking something that there is conflict about, you have to have the cavalry. And the cavalry to this new power reach and power grab is increasingly the space forces of the United States. But I always knew the military force is the only way the markets can work. It, it's like the British. It's, it's like the British brought, brought their warships. It's, it's like the Gulf War controlling the oil, uh, but that the marketplace has been turned into a battlefield. And I think it should be stopped. I think it is insane. And uh, we cannot afford to have a handful of politicians and military people respond to the world from a position of deep fear and deep panic because this kind of violence only comes from fear and we cannot afford the kind of violence they're getting ready to unleash on the world um, because of their ignorance and their fear because if they were not ignorant about how people live they would not be threatened by ordinary people living on their one acre patch of land managing to defend biodiversity and look after future generations. That's all people, most people in the world want. A little peace for themselves and the future. And that little pro dream of peace is being annihilated. And I don't think it's right and I don't think it's fair. With the Bush-Cheney takeover, the U.S. has an administration thoroughly gung-ho for Star Wars. It's loaded with figures intimately linked to the corporate and arch-conservative interests that have, with the U.S. military, been pushing for space warfare. Vice President Cheney himself was a member of the board of TRW, his wife Lynn a board member of Lockheed Martin, both major Star Wars contractors. In the Bush choice of Donald Rumsfeld as U.S. Secretary of Defense, the U.S. got a man whom the Washington Post called the leading proponent not only of national missile defenses, but also of U.S. efforts to take control of outer space. The U.S. Space Command's long-range plan starts out by stating it's been the U.S. Space Command's number one priority and the development and production process by design involved hundreds of people, including about 75 corporations. It lists the corporations, beginning with Aerojet and going through Boeing, Use Space, Lockheed Martin, Rand Corp, Raytheon, Sparta Corp, TRW to Vista Technologies. President Dwight Eisenhower warned in his farewell address to the nation in 1961 of the rise of a military-industrial complex. Now is the time, says the long-range plan, to begin developing space capabilities, space power in the